Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is part three for the Zoom recorded lecture for the topic privity. In part one and part two, we discuss about the definition and we also have a look at some of the case law okay, to show that um, this particular rule is applicable in Malaysia, not by way of statute, but by way of case law. Now we go to the uh, to the to another important part of the rule, which, which is exceptions to the rule. Okay. Because um, to balance the rule, we have the rule which is so um, hard or harsh, okay? Uh, because it's not, I mean, it will, might affect the third party. But in order to balance the rule, so there are some exceptions. In some situation, a certain situation, a third party can sue, even though they are not parties to the contract. So in other words, if this doctrine, if the rule uh, of privity were, is very, very, um, it's not flexible, okay? It might cause injustice okay? and inconvenience if we were to apply in all situations. That's why we have some exceptional circumstances or situation in which actually it's possible to apply. I mean, it's possible. It gives right to third party to sue, even though they are not um, contract, contracting parties to the contract. Let's have a look at the first exception. Okay, the first exception um, is third party can sue not as personal capacity, but can sue as executor or executorate. Okay, um, executor refers to the one who execute um, a will okay, after uh, the death, okay, the death of the, 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 the one who makes the will. Okay, uh, executorate is female, okay, executor is the male. Okay, the case is, uh, this is decision by House of Lord, best week and best week, reported in the year 1968, it involved a nephew, a nephew who promised his uncle to pay an annuity, okay, certain amount of money, to his auntie in consideration of the uncle transferring the goodwill of the business to the nephew. And even though the contract was made for the benefit of the auntie, but the auntie was not a party to the contract. Uh, later, after um, uncle passed away, I think here, all right, yeah, so the court held that, uh, the auntie here can actually um, file a suit. Okay? It could be specifically enforced okay, by uncle's personal representative. Okay? So who is the personal representative here? The auntie. Okay? So yes, it is enforceable um, because uh, auntie is uh, the executor. Or even we have another term which is administrator. Okay? Depends whether the DDC is left over or not. Yeah? So against the nephew, not in personal capacity of uh, auntie or the wife of the uncle here, okay. But now the, the auntie is the personal representative, okay, enforcing the contract. For local case, we have the case of Lim Fu Yong and Sons Realities from Berhad and Dato Eric Taylor, reported in year 1990. So, plenty, this is a pill case actually. So, plaintiff was Dato Eric Taylor and um, uh, he had entered into a contract with the defendant. Okay, Lim Fu Yong and Sun Realty, whereby plaintiff agreed to buy shares eh, in the company. Uh, the company is called Sharikat Crescent. So the price was 45000 And then, in consideration of the plaintiff agreeing to sell the said shares in Sharikat Crescent to the defendant. Okay? So the defendant um, agreed and undertook promise okay, to arrange for the plaintiff title deed pledge or charge to the Bangkok Bank Limited to be released. So that's all the consideration, the promises between the parties here. And the plaintiff actually, K. Dr. Eric Taylor, had performed all his obligation under the contract. And defendant paid the plaintiff the 45000 as promised, okay, and um, undertook to discharge the title deed. Because the title deed was charged, okay, so must discharge, must release the charge. And it, uh, actually, it is in respect of a piece of land insurance. But what happened was that there's a problem. The defendant failed okay, or neglected to obtain release of the charge okay, on the trust land. So it affects okay, trust land here. And later, um, Dr. Eric Taylor passed away. Okay? So there was non-performance okay, of the contract in discharging the title of the plaintiff land by the defendant here. Now, the administratorate uh, of the estate of the plaintiff, um, so now uh, sh she was suing for damages lah, okay, for the loss of 100,000 ringgit Malaysia. So what is the loss is all about here? It is the loss suffered okay, as a result of the forced sale of plaintiff matrimonial house. This is actually the consequence okay, of the uh, non-performance, okay, non-performance of discharging the title of the plaintiff land. 
in mean, yeah, because of the non performance, um, the house has to be sold off. And then another reason, another claim was that Plenty was compelled to sell the matrimonial house valued at 400,000. Uh, at a for sale value 300 million here, um, the, the real value is 400,000. But because need to sell quickly, okay, so only can sell at 300,000. So the, the, the difference, okay, the, 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 the loss here is 100,000. Okay? And then other than 100,000, plaintiff also was suing uh, for 45,000 for rental payments. Okay? Also in consequence okay, of the non-performance. And actually it is the losses suffered by plaintiff in her personal capacity. Okay, and the court held that only a party to a contract or his estate is entitled to compensation okay, for loss or damage caused by a breach of contract under section 74, section 1 okay, of Contracts Act. And then um, the party okay, in this particular provision, okay, it means a party who entered into the contract, signatory to the contract or his estate. So as far as the case was concerned, um, who brought the case here? It was brought by uh, Datin Peggy Taylor and she was administratrix of the estate of her deceased husband. And then um, she must prove that whatever losses suffered so is the losses suffered by the husband, not by herself, okay? So um, here, yeah, okay, must prove that she obtained, I mean, must obtain compensation for any loss suffered by the disease okay, or his estate, but not for any loss suffered by her in personal capacity. So uh, observation by the court okay, upon uh, examining all the things here, actually 100K plus 44,000 claimed by um, Datin Peggy. Yeah, actually, it was personal losses, not really su losses suffered by because of the breach of contract, not the direct loss, okay, suffered by um, Dato Eric. Okay, here. So again, Dato, Dato Eric Taylor. Okay, Dato Eric Taylor and the uh, where was Datin Peggy Taylor? Okay, and this is the decision by the card here. The loss of the sum, 100,000, suffered as a result of the for sale. Okay, actually, it, it was the loss uh, suffered, uh, the loss to Datin Peggy Taylor in her personal capacity. Okay, not a loss caused to the deceased or his estate as a, as a result of the breach of the said contract. And the loss of 44,000, okay, being rental payment again. Uh, also, this is also not a loss to the deceased estate, not a loss suffered by um, the deceased actually. Okay? So this is per her personal loss suffered, so cannot claim actually. Okay? But again, uh, Datin Peggy was not a party to the contract. And in the, I think you are very familiar with, with the case Parimala, Anak uh, Pempuan Muka Samit and Plus, uh, Project Lembraya Utara Selatan involving um, accident, okay, because um, I mean, the user of the highway was using the highway and then there was a stray car, okay, and um, involved in the accident and it caused the death, okay. Uh, what, what relevancy to our discussion here, okay, the court held that observation, huh? upon accepting the ticket at the toll gate, okay, we want to know who are the parties involved here, who are the contracting parties, the deceased driver, the, the driver, okay, the one who drove the car, had made a contract with the defendant, with the highway authority. And what's the term here? The latter, okay, Highway Authority Plus was to provide okay, safety to him, but also safety, make sure um, the, the highway was safe okay, to be used by his family. So meaning that here, um, they are all privy to the contract. Um, and then actually the relevant part is we zoom to the implied term okay, or warranty. This is our final topic later for the syllabus okay, for Law 1210. So implied term or warranty was that the state highway will be safe for use by the deceased and his passengers, even though the contract was made by the driver and the highway authority. But the term here, okay, it covers the third party as well. Okay, another exception when it relates to agency. Okay. But uh, in the contract involving, I mean, pertaining to agency, we have uh, the, the, the term like uh, principal, okay, and agent, and also the third party, the one who have a contract. I mean, usually contract is between agent and um, the third party. Okay, there's no con direct contract between agent and the principal. But whatever problem later, actually, third party can sue agent, can sue the principal. Principal also can sue the third party. Okay, this is uh, under the concept of agency. So, the, but the issue is here, 
whether an undisclosed principal still has the right to claim upon a contract entered into by an agent in his own name okay, with the, the other party uh, where the, the agent could have assigned the benefit of the contract to the undisclosed principal. Usually, if the principal okay, is disclosed, there will be no problem. Okay, the problem might arise because the principal was undisclosed. Yeah, the third party doesn't know who, who is the principal. It was never disclosed by the agent. So whether um, the agent, I mean, whether the principal has the right okay, to sue third party in case there is any problem later. Okay. So again, uh, when we talk about agency here, the concept of agency is an exception to the doctrine of privity. Because why? An agent may contract on behalf of his principal okay, with the third party. And actually, agent can create, okay, can form a binding contract between principal and third party. I mean that here, agent uh, signed the contract, but actually on behalf of the principal. So contract is formed between principal and third party. Okay. Um, so meaning that here, yes, third party or even principal can uh, take benefit from the contract. Okay, or whenever it involves exclusion clause, or whether it is um, enforceable or not, you actually it is, yes lah. Okay, I mean it will affect the rights of them, and then even though it's not the principal who entered into the contract, but whatever exclusion clause imposed by principal, actually it will take effect, enforceable against the third party. Okay, so. The, the impact is that okay, uh, bringing the, it brings the third party into direct contractual relationship okay, with the plaintiff. Plaintiff here refers to the principal. Okay. okay, but for the cases of undisclosed principal, yeah, okay, uh, it should not be allowed okay, to intervene if he knows okay, uh, this is a very specific limitation. Okay, if the principal is undisclosed. And um, uh, this principal knows that third party does not want to deal with him, only wants to deal with the agent only. Okay, so in that particular situation, um, I mean, undisclosed principal cannot sue. I mean, it, he doesn't obtain the rights. Okay, he, I mean, he is considered as uh, he's not privy to the contract. Okay, in this particular situation, in the year, exception under exception. So if the undisclosed principal's character, credit, or substance is important okay, to the other party, the party, then undisclosed principal cannot enforce it. Okay, I mean that here, uh, this is the exclusion limitation okay, under the uh, rule pertaining to agency. Okay, we stop here. We are going to continue later. Structure.